Hey, Brass Facts here. We're outside of the uh, Desert Tech production facility in the most voyeuristic, creepy, journalistic manner possible to talk about Desert Tech. I think everyone knows who Desert Tech is at, at this point. It's that uh, Utah company that produces highly precise bolt action bull pups, as well as the famous or I think nowadays infamous MDRX 556, 308, 65, and then sometimes if it feels like it, 300 blackout. Bull pup. Recently, Desert Tech has sort of been on the up and up in a lot of ways with their 2024, with their 2024 showing at Shot Show with the new redesigned, reimagined MDRX, the Wolverine, Wolverine, Wyvern. Can I buy a vowel, please? The Wolverine, several models and variants of that, like the Saber Tooth, as well as the Quattro, and a number of other things. 2024 looked to be the year of Desert Tech, or at least a really good year for Desert Tech. However, uh, quite recently, a couple weeks ago, Desert Tech dropped a very peculiar message uh, about being hit by ransomware. Then out of nowhere, that message was deleted and radio silence from the company alongside a sizable portion of said company basically being furloughed and then fired. So what the hell gives? Doing a little digging, myself and Hop were able to get into contact with someone on the inside. Well, formerly on the inside to get a peek on what exactly was happening at this Utah firearms company. Please note a lot of this information is from a single individual, and as such, some details may be wrong, misleading, biased, you name it. I have also left out a good chunk of information for various reasons, including protecting the identity of this individual. Not all of this information may be factual. Back to the premise. So while the original statement from Nick Young was deleted, it appears to be correct. Desert Tech was in fact hit by ransomware, for those not aware, ransomware is a malicious software that is injected into a computer, encrypting the entire thing, preventing its use without the encryption key. Even basic encryption is extremely time consuming to break, and as such, the ransom part is usually the easy way out. Pay the money and hope the hacker returns access of your fleet of computers. This was the case here. Desert Tech got hit and a sum of 300,000 USD was demanded. Desert Tech, for whatever reason, likely a combination of we don't negotiate with terrorists, morals, and perhaps most likely a lack of money opted not to pay the sum, instead committing to the painful recovery period of trying to regain control of our systems manually. The attack played out as falls. On the first day, the attack occurred roughly on a Thursday or Friday, and at first glance didn't seem too bad. Everyone was sent home. It's now the weekend, and on closer inspection, everything appears worse than presumed every single computer is hit. The machinery also, which is tied to an actual computer to run, are similarly out of action. Perhaps worst of all though, the backups are hit, meaning the company cannot restore to a previous point to restore operations. The company can no longer function in its entirety. Sales, invoices, billing, contacts, ongoing communications, inaccessible behind a now bricked computer. As the gravity of this sets in, the company instantly furloughs approximately half the company before the work week even starts. The remaining personnel who are not furloughed are attempting to shift operations to analog to restore contacts and to take payments via pen and paper before Monday to at least have some semblance of cash flow and operations. The IT department similarly gets to work as restoring as many systems or at least recover as much data as possible. Monday rolls around and despite about half the company being on indeterminate furlough and the other half likely 14 expressos deep and now on a 72 hour slumber party, too much cash is being hemorrhaged. If something is not done, the company will go under. A war meeting is called with the company's survival being the primary question. What needs to be done to ensure this company can survive at least for the short term? The answer to that question would appear soon thereafter. Over the next two weeks, 50% of the company or so is laid off. Non-vital operations are canned. Despite this, and several weeks later, things are still not quite turning around. While certain machines are now operational and product is moving, all R&D and future projects are basically canned in perpetuity as most files are simply inaccessible. But for those that are available, simply don't make sense to pursue in the light of imminent bankruptcy. So while operations are slowly returning to nominal, at this point the company has laid off now approximately three quarters of the staff. All that remains is a trim company of friends and family, likely due to the loyalty and willingness to go above and beyond to save this company. Most of them are now scrambling to learn and execute not just on their former job in this new condition, but also other jobs of those that will let go in a desperate attempt to keep the company alive on minimal funds. So uh, before they come out and get rid of me, I've actually been part of a company that has been hit by ransomware 
surprisingly, in the firearms industry, and it was a huge pain in the ass. Everyone was pissed off, and it made life miserable for about two to three weeks. One thing that really stuck out to me, outside of lost revenue from the POS system essentially being unaccessible at the time, was that it really wasn't nearly as big of a deal as, well, as we're seeing here with Desert Tech. Yeah, the company lost a bunch of money, both from lost sales and essentially having to pay to rebuild certain systems and to get better security, you name it. But at the end of the day, the problem was solved and things kind of returned back to normal within a month or so. As we can see with Desert Tech, that hasn't been the case. Half the company, more than half the company is gone. So why is that? So even before the attack, all was not well at Desert Tech. Most people have perhaps picked up on the downrange result of this with how the MDRX rifle fared over the years. It consistently, through its many iterations, well past the initial growing phase, was plagued by performance issues, reliability issues, and design issues with certain barrel caliber combinations. It got so bad that, to this day, certain barrels result in an unusably inaccurate rifle, and yet others, like the 300 Blackout barrel, are just entirely discontinued, being an unsolvable enigma for them. The Wolverine, Wyvern, Wolver, Wolverine similarly is showing signs of falling in a somewhat similar path to the MDRX. A lot of this, I'm told, has to do with inconsistent contract parts and the growing pains of a new platform. And perhaps, in some cases, just unrealistic target design goals, as well as obviously bad QC practices. DT, of course, used to be known as a premium company. They have that in their roots, and they were attempting to correct course with, say, in-house barrel production and their own ammo company. But all of this costs a lot of money to do. Money, which Desert Tech didn't have very much of at the time. In the interim, Desert Tech, even if it had a spotless quality control department, which it didn't, simply could not afford to not send every single rifle out of the door to meet demand created which resulted in the tarnished reputations over the last several years. There's also, and this is my personal opinion, when you look at Desert Tech's strategy, a lot of perhaps over-expansion with something like the Quattro magazine, which is incredibly niche at best, weird marketing like, say, the very obviously expensive heat shootout thing they did, and just a number of things. The company seemed to have tried to push very aggressively on the hype front and then perhaps outrun their own company's capabilities, resulting in the situation they are at today. Who knows? But it's clear that even a couple months ago, Desert Tech was not in the best of shape. And then they obviously got hit by the ransomware attack. The question on everyone's, or at least my mind, is what's the future for Desert Tech? Say what you will about the company. They were pushing some pretty interesting bounds. Uh, their bullpup designs, while very you know, infamous and fraught with issues, uh, are actually pretty damn cool. Every product they seem to put out seems to be, you know, different than the last, which is not something you can say for most companies in the industry. So the question on mine and you know, most people's mind is probably, what's the future for Desert Tech? Uh, recently on the website, out of nowhere, the Trek 22, a 22 bullpup, uh, showed up indicating that if I had to guess, the company is pushing forward very low effort, high return, or at least medium return products that try to get cash back going. The fact that they have a new product is pretty promising that, well, at least something's going on behind the doors over there. So you've probably noticed I've left out a lot of stuff, and as I mentioned, some of that is the protected identity of the former DT employee, but a lot of that has to do with trying to walk a very fine line here. On one hand, I think it's important to get this information out. Desert Tech sells a premium product at a premium price, and these are novel designs. So if they go under, uh, you're gonna be pretty SOL. That being said, I am rooting for the company a bit. Maybe it's because they're in Utah, maybe because I think their product is cool. Ultimately though, I don't want to be the guy to take a company that is teetering on the edge and go ahead and give them that last little push. This video is here there to warn you, you know, for customers like, hey, heads up, this company struggling a little bit and their outlook isn't looking so hot. But similarly, if you do support the company, now might be the time to uh, kind of show them that support when, and buying from them when they, uh, they perhaps need it the most. Regardless, uh, that is your call to make. I just wanted to kind of report the news, so to speak. So, hey, thanks, buddy. Hey, nice overlander. Probably, probably a very odd video in the grand scheme of the Brass Facts uh, YouTube Emporium. We'll go back to review soon enough. So, yeah, that's really about it. Hopefully this was useful to you, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one.